Okay. Um, so uh, today my talk is uh, on uh, post conversion capture, and I will try to give what is the current status and where uh, to focus for the uh, research and development. So this is basically the outline of my presentation. Just to give, uh, first I will give the introduction, then I will talk more about uh, some pilot plants and demo projects, and uh, then uh, I will talk more on the solvent-based uh, post conversion capture process. And in the end, I will give you a brief uh, idea about the second and third generation post conversion capture technologies. So, as uh, most of you have uh, uh, good uh, information on the post conversion capture technology, so it's just a brief uh, uh, overview of uh, where the process comes. So, uh, after the previous going through all the uh, processes, uh, like uh, electrostatic precipitator for particulate removal, fuel gas desulfurization, uh, that treated fuel gas can be sent to the carbon uh, dioxide capture unit where the CO2 can be removed and the treated fuel gas is sent to the stack uh, for the, uh, to be released in the environment. So why we have to, uh, why uh, uh, we, we should use post conversion capture so there are not uh, major issues for the integration and uh, also the operational flexibility is there so if you want to switch off your CO2 capture unit it's uh, easy to do it uh, for a post conversion capture technology and uh, yes uh, there is uh, already uh, uh, cost reduction efforts uh, from all these pilot and demo projects. So just an uh, overview, uh, as we know that uh, currently the DD post conversion capture technology is solvent based absorption process. So this is a schematic diagram of the uh, CO2 absorption process. So here you see that the CO2 uh, uh, in the fuel gas uh, of around 12% uh, is entering the absorber where we have a reactive uh, solution which will uh, react uh, uh, with the CO2 and uh, absorb it in the liquid at 40 degrees centigrade and the treated will be sent out uh, uh, for the, uh, to the stack and uh, this uh, rich uh, CO2 absorbed solvent is sent by heat exchanger uh, uh, to the uh, stripper uh, regenerator where uh, at the high degree temperature uh, at 120 CO2 is released uh, from the uh, top of the uh, 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 regenerator and this uh, CO2 uh, lean uh, solvent is sent uh, back to the absorber for further absorption process. And uh, this uh, 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 process requires steam which can be taken from uh, IPLP crossover piping uh, from the steam cycle of the power plant. So just to give you a, a short idea about this uh, chemical reaction, a reactive solvent. So as uh, CO2 is an acid gas, we need a base to react with it. So it's a basically acid-base reaction. So this is a very general reaction. There are many several reactions. So here you can see that the amine-based solvent is reacting with CO2 at low temperature and is forming a combined uh, compound called carbamate. And uh, there is uh, also protonated amine uh, present there. Um, and when we increase the temperature, the, this, uh, it, because it's a reversible reaction, so it uh, uh, shifts it uh, back, uh, and then the CO2 is released uh, from the regenerator, and the uh, free amine uh, solvent is sent back to the uh, uh, absorber. So here are some examples for uh, the typical uh, solvent uh, which are considered for CO2 absorption. The most common one uh, is the monoethanolamine MEA. Uh, there, there are others like sterically injured amine AMP and people with the amine. Here are some of the examples from the different amine-based uh, solvents. Uh, from uh, and their name of the process and their developers. So for example, economy from Fluor, uh, they have an MEA based uh, with uh, uh, additional activators. Chilled ammonia process from us from MHI has KS1. They have some uh, plants in uh, uh, India as well as a urea production. Uh, BAS, uh, BSF, and Tau, they have MDA, uh, this is a tertiary amine based solvent. TLOs, even they have coral and so on. Uh, so regarding to the process economics, 
uh, as uh, Mr. Uh, Luca has uh, already mentioned, uh, I'm just giving you uh, uh, only a relative uh, values because for the Indian context, uh, it's uh, different. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, uh, capital cost uh, from the, the study for 90% CO2 capture for super medical contrast coal power plant. And for the CO2 um, uh, post combustion capture, we used to shell cancel technology, which is a meat based solvent. And uh, you can see that the, for the total capital cost for the super medical coal price coal and big CO2, uh, 24% uh, cost will be for the amine absorption uh, plant. And uh, regarding to the OPEX, the total OPEX for, uh, for the year, there, uh, it was found for, to be 15% increase uh, uh, in the uh, euros per year. So uh, now coming to the next part of my presentation is uh, looking at different uh, pilot and demo uh, plants around the world. So there, here is an example from UK. This is a very rich CC pilot, 100 plus. It's from Houston Power Systems, and they have uh, 100 tons per day uh, CO2 capture. And it's a slipstream coming from 500 megawatt uh, uh, power plant. Uh, it's a coal-based power plant. And they are doing the testing, and uh, they are finished. Uh, just finished with the, all the testing. Um, this is another example from RWE uh, in Germany. They have a CO2 capture plant in Niederrossen, and uh, they also have a, a CO2 uh, uh, from the uh, late night uh, power plant uh, uh, slipstream, and uh, it's a, uh, also a meat based uh, process. And uh, they are currently moving further for the third uh, phase of the uh, project. Uh, Testing Here is another example from the uh, America. I took this example because it's the chilled ammonia process, which is a uh, bit different than uh, um, uh, normal uh, uh, amine based process. And it's a technology from Alstom and it's for 90% CO2, uh, CO2 capture rate uh, for a 235 megawatt uh, CO2 stream from 1300 megawatt uh, coal fired power plant in uh, West Virginia. And uh, they have a, uh, they are doing also sequestration of 1.5 million tons per year of CO2. And uh, they are different partners and uh, they have uh, uh, successfully validated the uh, older CO2 capture and storage uh, in this uh, project. Uh, here, uh, as I mentioned in the first presentation, the boundary dam, which is uh, uh, in uh, Canada, it's, a, it's an integrated CCS a demonstration project, and uh, it's a it's a mean based uh, uh, process uh, uh, from Russia can solve technology, and uh, they will start the next year in spring, uh, and uh, we, uh, it's uh, quite an important project uh, for uh, the whole uh, CCS uh, chain demonstration. Here's another example. <laughs> this uh, project is from the Netherlands. It's a uh, Rotterdam uh, 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 CO2 capture and uh, a storage demonstration project it's called Road. And uh, this is uh, from the Ion uh, power plant and of uh, uh, 100,000 uh, uh, megawatts. And uh, uh, there will be a, a pilot plant for 250 megawatt, uh, megawatt of post combustion capture and they are currently at the planning stage so uh, uh, most likely they will start uh, construction in the uh, coming years. <coughs> so uh, coming uh, to the next part of my presentation is the uh, uh, looking at uh, what are the different improvements which has been uh, done uh, and reported in uh, uh, publications from different researchers. Uh, so uh, when we talk for the uh, amine-based solvent uh, uh, the ideal solvent for the post combustion capture should have a good uh, CO2 absorption capacity. It should absorb uh, fast and it should have a lower regeneration energy because that's the energy penalty uh, coming uh, in the OPEX. Uh, but it also should uh, uh, have a lower uh, uh, degradation. So, for example, from uh, oxidative degradation and uh, thermal degradation. And, uh, it should have a, a less uh, corrosive uh, and it should not be harmful for the environment. So here is uh, just an uh, uh, overview of all different solvents. 
uh, on their sort of regeneration energy, and that's a very critical, uh, important factor for the immediate solar. So you can see here the energy requirement in gigajoules per ton of CO2, and the starting from different uh, solvents, you can see MA is around 3.8. Uh, gigajoule per ton of CO2 energy requirement, and, uh, and you can see different solvents. And uh, currently, they are coming to the stage of around two gigajoule per tons of CO2. So you can see there is a constant effort in reducing the energy requirement from the uh, different uh, solvents. And uh, so there, there, there are a lot of improvement in this area. So when we when we see these uh, improvements, I would like to just to mention uh, what uh, will be impact on the process uh, and what uh, are the proper different properties which are affecting this uh, 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 regeneration energy. So in this uh, slide you can see that the regeneration energy, when we look at regeneration energy, it's uh, dependent on the heat of absorption, sensible heat, that's the heat capacity of the uh, solvent, the heat of the water vaporization. So and this is uh, directly uh, affecting your fuel consumption and, if, and that will affect your OPEX. So when you have a, a solvent which has a higher uh, uh, regeneration energy requirement, that's a negative effect. Uh, and uh, if you are switching to that type of solvent in your system, uh, in, your, in your process, then uh, you have to take some considerations such as you, uh, you would require more steam to, uh, uh, to provide to the uh, capture plant. And if you have a reduced uh, the, the solvent with a lower energy, uh, regeneration energy, uh, which is a positive effect, and then uh, you have to consider that if you are switching to that type of solvent, you need to have extra capacity in your steam turbine to produce that additional electricity which was required from the previous uh, uh, solvent, which was uh, having higher regeneration energy, and uh, so on. So here is another important uh, property for the solvent is the absorption kinetics, and that will uh, 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 that will uh, make uh, the column uh, lamp uh, uh, design uh, requirement. So here you can see that uh, uh, from the MEA uh, there is uh, there are better solvents for the reaction kinetics, uh, and they are faster solvents uh, uh, compared to the MEA. So when we are having uh, the, the solvent which is uh, having a faster kinetics, it's uh, it's basically uh, affecting uh, the height of the absorber, and also uh, that will affect the, uh, the power consumption, which will be required for the uh, fugas blowers, and uh, in the end, it will affect your capex and opex. So if we have a solvent which has increased uh, absorption kinetics, which is a positive effect, it, uh, of course you need to also you will have uh, extra steam available because uh, for the uh, worse solvent uh, you would require more energy for the blowers, and uh, for the uh, uh, reduced uh, uh, absorption kinetics you would require uh, more uh, energy because you are, you will have a larger column and your absorber height will increase so that will affect your energy consumption. Uh, just on the degradation side, uh, this is an uh, overview of different solvents on, on what temperature is the maximum you can go uh, in your regenerator. So you can see that uh, different solvents you can regenerate at different temperatures and as higher we get, uh, it's better it is because then you can uh, you produce uh, more uh, pressurized CO2 than you require less uh, compression, uh, uh, energy for the CO2 compression. So, uh, uh, so you can see here that there is an effort in uh, having uh, different solvents which can be re which can be regenerated at uh, different uh, 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 temperatures, and after that they will start degrading. So for degradation, of course, it will affect your solvent uh, uh, characteristics. That they will lose uh, uh, their absorption capacity because they're forming all the different degradation compounds. And uh, then you, that will affect your solvent vapor cost and the thermal degradation, uh, and uh, that affects your stripper uh, operating temperature and pressure. And of course, you have, you have uh, if you have a different type of solvent, it affects your uh, process requirements, and uh, that needs to be taken into consideration. So uh, now the next uh, part is the. Uh, 
uh, improvements related to the process design. And currently there are like 15 different process integrations which has been reported in open publications. And uh, such as interstate temperature co uh, cooling, split flow process methods, stripping, and uh, heat integration from different uh, uh, options available. I just want to show you a few examples here. So here there is a, this is an example from the uh, multi-component uh, column. So here you can absorb CO2 and SO2 in, this, uh, in the same column. This will uh, reduce your uh, energy requirement, which will be required from the pretreatment for the SO2 re removal. And uh, but uh, you have to consider that there is an additional uh, heat exchangers and pumps required. And uh, also, uh, if you want to uh, operate, uh, if you want to stop operating CO2, but you want to operate SO2, then you have a limitation, then uh, the flexibility is limiting uh, for such a process. Uh, here is another example for the CO2 uh, 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 capture plant uh, with the interstate temperature control. Uh, because this uh, CO2 absorption is an exothermic reaction, so when we uh, absorb CO2, it, uh, it releases energy, so then your temperature increases. And as we have seen in the reaction, if you increase the temperature absorption capacity, uh, the temperature will start reversing. So to control that, you apply the intercooling in the middle section of the uh, absorber. That will reduce uh, uh, the temperature and increase the absorption capacity. And uh, but uh, and you require additional heat exchangers and pumps for this uh, such a process. Uh, another example is the vapor recompression, and uh, here you can see that uh, by applying this vapor recompression at uh, the uh, regenerator, you can increase your va uh, vapors, water vapors in the uh, uh, regenerator, which will enhance your CO2 regeneration. So that's a benefit uh, uh, on the energy side, but you would require additional pump and the uh, for such a process. So uh, from these uh, uh, processes, you can see that there, uh, yeah, you, you, there are different options available, but uh, there is uh, some impact on the additional equipment requirement. So when we are considering all these uh, process integration, uh, you should uh, look at the overall uh, picture. What would be the uh, overall power plant uh, performance and how the uh, it will affect your OPEX? and uh, what are the operational flexibility and how easy it is to integrate in the existing plant if there is additional space available to have all these extra pipings and so on which will be required when you need all the traditional heat exchangers and pumps and uh, if there are any uh, extra considerations such as water requirements. Uh, so all these uh, uh, areas need to be looked at when we, when we look at these different process integrations for the CO2 capture plant. So just uh, one slide on the emission control. Uh, as uh, I mean, tend to degradate, so it can make some volatile compounds. And uh, there are different technologies available. And uh, here, here are some examples. So by a suitable water wash column, you can, uh, with a suitable temperature control, you can uh, reduce uh, your I mean, emission from top of the absorber. Uh, or you can even have an acid wash. So whatever I mean, the vapors are coming out, it will absorb. It will be absorbing the acid wash. Column. Or even you can have this dry bed column, which is from RWE and PSM from Germany. And uh, so there are different options available, and uh, we have done also this study, and you can completely eliminate your emission from the absorber side uh, to, uh, in the treated periods. So talking about the second and third generation post combustion capture technologies, I just wanted to uh, give you uh, uh, some uh, highlights of uh, different uh, options available. Uh, so here is, are the uh, second and third generation post combustion capture technology, which is solvent based. So first one is the biphasic solvent, and uh, this has an advantage because uh, uh, when it uh, absorbs, it's a mixture of solvent. When it absorbs CO2, it separates. So only uh, uh, it separates. So uh, there is a CO2 lean uh, phase, which has less CO2, and there is a uh, uh, phase which has a uh, more CO2 in it. So then you only need to transfer this uh, higher concentration CO2 solvent to the regenerator. So in that way you will, you are only re regenerating small amount of uh, solvent. So that will uh, reduce your energy requirement. So there is a potential for such a solvent. And uh, as well as these ionic liquids, they have advantage that they are very stable. Uh, they are uh, less degrading. 
So there is also a, a work going on in this area. Uh, another example for this um, uh, solvent based is the enzymes. These carbonic anhydrase, which is found in the human beings as well, they are accelerators, so that you can uh, add that into your solvent and they can increase your kinetics if you have a solvent which has a very low uh, absorption rate. So uh, this works as an enhancer, very very fast enhancer uh, for CO2 absorption. And uh, of course, as was mentioned earlier, the algae absorbing CO2 in the algae is also uh, an option for CO2. Uh, for the solid uh, sorbent based, uh, uh, there are different uh, options available. Uh, zeolites uh, is one of the options. Uh, you can have a, a lower energy requirement. Uh, you have to consider the moisture content uh, for such a process. And also for the moss, uh, they have a higher surface area, so you, they can absorb for CO2. And uh, uh, similar for the uh, membrane type of contractor, they have a more surface area to absorb CO2, so you can have a lower uh, column size uh, if you have a membrane type of contractor. And uh, as was mentioned by previous uh, uh, presentation, cash and looping, uh, there is also uh, a good uh, option for uh, post combustion capture technology. So uh, looking at the trend for the uh, second and third generation post combustion capture process, uh, here is, this is a preliminary survey, um, and uh, you can see that uh, there uh, in the over the years there has been an increase in the number of publications uh, for second and third generation technologies such as absorption, membranes, and algae. And uh, when we look at the patents, number of patents, so that you also see that uh, in the last uh, four years there has been increase in the number of uh, patents uh, which has been granted for absorption, process, membranes, and algae. So, there, uh, so you can see that uh, there is a lot of effort going on uh, in developing uh, these uh, technologies. And just to uh, give you an idea about where these technologies are, so for the carbonic anhydrase, uh, anhydrase uh, with the bicarbonate solution, currently occurring in the uh, in USA, they are doing a uh, pilot plant testing uh, for uh, the real uh, fluid gas conditions. Uh, for the biophysic solvent IFP in France, they are uh, uh, currently uh, this month they will decide if they will modify this NLs with uh, C. CO2 pilot plant in Italy uh, to change it to, uh, to biophasic solvent uh, uh, plant. Uh, and for the membrane contactors, uh, the uh, membranes uh, from the Syntap uh, in Norway, which has been developed by them, that it has been tested at the uh, coal power plant in Portugal, and they found the similar results which they were found, which were found in the lab. So there is quite a promising uh, uh, results from these pilot plant testing, and uh, this shows that the second and third generation technologies are coming at the stage of pilot plant testing which will develop more understanding and more confidence for these uh, technologies. So uh, where to focus? So uh, when we are looking for the solvent-based uh, process, I mean, based, so we have to look at uh, all uh, solvent improvements, uh, better uh, process integrations, different uh, integrations possibilities, and uh, it's important to have more pilot plant data and also to have more pilot plant data on the operational flexibility side and also on the emission control technology side. Uh, for the second and third generation, uh, we need to do a very good techno economics to look at the, uh, to get a more clear picture on the economic side as well, and as well as on the environmental impact and a uh, uh, good uh, pilot plant evaluation, we would require that. So, uh, so these are the focus points for post combustion capture process. And with this uh, slide, I would like to say thanks. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your attention.